Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and today we're going to be talking about scientific theism, or why God's will is not a free will. Okay, um, this is going to be an interesting show. Um, ordinarily, like when I do the shows, there's these lights that go on, you know, in the cameras, right? And so, like, that tells me where to look. So, I got like these three cameras. Like, today, like, there's a glitch for whatever reason not working. So, like, I'm going to have to, like, uh, direct the camera changes, which will be new for me, but hopefully we'll, we'll get this right. All right. So, um, now I'm going right, <laughs> to try to camera change. We are, um, all right. Before I get into the topic, um, I want to just briefly explain why I'm doing the show and, um, and why free will is impossible. I mean, I, I'm doing the show because like we've, our whole civilization is under this mistaken premise, this shared delusion that, that we all have a free will, that we can choose whatever we want, when the exact opposite is what, what's true, that actually everything's predetermined, nothing's up to us, you know, the world is like a movie. And, you know, I find that, you know, amazing on, on various levels, you know, just one that the universe would compel us because, <coughs> you know, it's not our choice to get it wrong either. So, so the universe gets us to, to get, let's say, the, um, the f second fundamental fact of human existence, the first being that we exist, um, wrong. The second, I guess the second fundamental fact is that, that we do things. So what we do is not really up to us. All right. Um, and why is, why is free will an illusion? Two basic explanations. The first one is simple causality. This has been known since the time of the Greeks. There's a, a Greek philosopher, Leucippus, who said um, 350 BC, I'm not sure. Um, he said that everything happens for a reason, nothing at, at random. That's like the first, I think, statement of causality in the West. And I'm sure people said that before, whatever. But anyway, causality sim simply means that if everything has a cause, that means that every one of our decisions must have a cause. And then the cause of that decision must have a cause. And the cause of that cause must have, must have a cause. So see, now you've got this chain of cause and effect happening. And you got to remember that the, the cause will always precede the effect. The effect always comes after the cause. So naturally, with each cause, if everything has a cause, you're going back in time with each cause. And since, you know, it's a chain of cause and effect, you're going back to before we were born. I mean, we can go back to before the planet was created, um, to the Big Bang if we want, but any time the causal chain goes back to before we were born, obviously that... Um, that makes free will impossible. Okay, and the other, the other kind of like explanation that I like to use um, is that why free will is impossible is that we all we have an unconscious. Um, anytime we make a decision, it's based on more than one consideration. It's based on morality. Is it you know likely to create more pleasure, less pain? Um, you know, the different experiences we've had in the past. And, and the thing is that, like, all this stuff, all this, these considerations we base every, or I guess some, some decisions are just, like, instantaneous, but that, you know, that's, that's <laughs> all right, all this stuff that, um, that, we, that we base our, our decisions are on, they have to be in our unconscious, because our conscious mind simply can't store more than one or a few concepts, you know, at a time, you know. And so that you've got all the data upon which we're basing decisions in the unconscious, and the conscious mind can't really access it in real time, so then the, the, um, the reality is that every decision we make is actually made by our unconscious, and then we become aware of it, okay? And then we become conscious of it and mistakenly conclude that um, that our conscious mind, in this case, had made the decision. So you have to remember, consciousness is simply awareness. So it's basically aware of of the environment, you know, and it's also aware of what's going on within us, you know, within our unconscious. All right. So um, now most of the episodes that I do are about the science of free will, like you know, causality, um, the unconscious, and all. But um, 
But today I'm going to focus on describing and explaining how free will is impossible, or, you know, the term is kind of incoherent, from a religious perspective. Because the idea is that, like, you know, people are religious. People um, like their um, conception of God, you know, to, 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 to believe there's, I, you know, I'm religious. I, um, I've, I've been raised religiously, and, you know, that explains it. Um, and so the idea is that we, um, for a lot of people, the, the fact that we don't have free will is like, you know, confusing enough, challenging enough. But then you get into like, you know, well, there's also like, you know, all right, the reason, one of the reasons I'm doing this show, there's a guy, um, he was first a philosopher, he got a degree in neuroscience, and he's written a few best-selling books. His name is Sam Harris. And in his last book, which was published, uh, I just learned actually this morning, um, I think October 2010, The Moral Landscape, he goes into um, why free will is impossible. And he kind of advocates for a scientific morality, which is kind of like what I'm doing also in a sense, scientific logical. But the difference with his presentation is that um, Sam Harris happens to be an atheist. And, you know, I completely respect the view because, like, you know, basically there is no, quote unquote, evidence of a God in a certain sense, at least the God of the Bible with, with the, uh, you know, um, I don't know, the beard and all that stuff, you know, the, um, you know just um, how, how we um, get to know God in that way. So, so I, I, I thought that, you know, for this show, we will um, kind of like focus on how you can actually have a God if you define God in a certain way, you know, because, um, and that's what we're going to be doing. Okay. All right, before we start, though, I just want to like just note that religious arguments either for or against free will, generally fail because they deal with um, incoherent concepts. Um, for example, if, um, if God is all-powerful, then obviously we can't have a free will, you know. If, 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 if God, you know, because that's, I mean, basically in religion there are three fundamental Attribute, attributes to God. Um, first, that he's omnipresent, meaning that he's everywhere, you know, and um, that kind of makes sense, you know. Um, if God, you know, created the world, God is the world, whatever. I mean, from my perspective, yeah, if God <laughs> created the world and there was no world before he created it, he obviously had to have created it from himself, him, herself, whatever. Um, so that's the first one. So like God is om, om, omnipresent. He's everywhere. The second one is God is omnipotent or all-powerful. And, <laughs> and with the all-powerful, it, it, it kind of, it's, it's incoherent in the sense that, um, in other words, like, if God is all-powerful, then he could, according to that rash, uh, rationale, um, give us a free will. But, see, it doesn't make sense, because if he's all-powerful, then he would have the only power, you know. Um, and the, the, other, the other kind of um, general description for God, you know, basic attribute is that, is that God is um, is all knowing, omniscient. Okay, so that means he knows everything in the past. He knows everything in the present. It's going on everywhere, and he goes. He knows. She knows uh, everything in the future. So think about it. You know, from the standpoint of the future, um, if God knows what's happening in the future, um, then then obviously God is is creating the future. You know, you, you can't really, if you're all powerful and you're omniscient, then, <laughs> you know, there's no, there's no way that, that, that we human beings could, um, 
you know, could fit into that power structure and, and, you know, decide for ourselves. Now, the reason I say that these arguments are incoherent, in a sense, because, like, um, well, oh, I don't know. All right, anyway, <laughs> the, um, the basic point of this show is that um, we've got a choice. It's not our choice because we don't have a free will, but we've got a choice in how we want to view our reality. We can view it from the scientific perspective that it's a, a giant machine, that everything is like physical, that we're, you know, everything thing is a thing, <laughs> you know, we're, we're like particles, we're atoms, we're molecules, everything is mechanistic, we're things. Okay, that's the scientific view of the universe. Or um, we, could, we could also view the universe from a more, um, I think from a wiser perspective. You know, um, seeing the world in a mechanistic way doesn't work so very much, so very well for us because we are, um, we're people, we're persons. We, we, we like to personalize our relation to, well, you know, to whatever, I mean, to, to as much as we can. Certainly we can't personalize our, our relation to a table or, or the, um, the floor or a chair or something, but when it comes to something as, um, as important, as fundamental as existence, I think that, you know, yeah, we'd, we'd rather be a part of a big personified existence than a big thing okay it just makes us feel better and that's that's my um that's my take on on the universe basically i say that if god is omnipresent if god is everywhere god is naturally um going to be in us you know um um if God, if God is all powerful, all right, I'm losing my train of thought. This is this is confusing me. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to like work on the camera change as well while doing this, but um, it, it's it's working out well enough. Okay, so so yeah, if, so so basically, I'm 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 seeing God as the personification, you know, of reality, and and that's easy. It, it's it's a synonym. God is a synonym for the universe. Right, I got it. If God is um is omnipresent, God is everywhere, well, the universe is everywhere. You know, if God is one, the universe is one. If God is all-powerful, well, the universe has the laws of nature that are all-powerful. That's what the physical laws are about. So, um, all right, so that, you know, and it's important again, because like, again, you know, for this, this issue, this topic is getting, um, you know, Harris, Sam Harris is coming out with his book March 6th, um, you can expect through the spring and summer that, you know, a lot of um, even popular magazines, I would think, would um, begin to explore this, like, revolutionary new uh, revelation. And, and so, yeah, so, like, for people, you know, it's a tough, it's a tough kind of a realization to make that, you know, to, to, to accept that everything is predetermined, that nothing is really up to us, you know. It's not... Um, it's not how we're raised. It's not how we're conditioned, you know. Um, but but um, but I think sometimes it's even a tougher um, thing. It's it absolutely has to be a much tougher thing for people to to give up the the um, the idea of God. And so, like the purpose of this show is that you can understand that. Um, that free will is impossible, but God can exist if God is viewed um, from the right definition, from the right perspective. Um, so, yeah, so like, for example, with, um, we have physical laws, you know, um, gravity, um, electromagnetism, you know, the four basic forces, um, just the, the, the laws of nature, cause and effect. Um, fine, you can view these scientifically or you can view them as a manifestation of God's power. It's God that's doing this. <laughs> now, all right, it gets confusing. It gets a little confusing because, like, um, you got to make this distinction. Ordinarily, when we conceive of the world with free will and God, we're going to, like, let's say we talk to God, we pray to God, say, 
we say, God, you know, um, do this, do whatever, you know, make this a great show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, see, the thing is, like, whether this is a great show, whatever, whatever, whether whatever is um, works out, you know, however well it works out or not, that's already been predetermined, you know. In other words, like, the, the, the cause and effect, remember that we started out with cause and effect. The cause and effect chain that governs everything, you know, um, goes back at least as far as the Big Bang, okay? And, you, you know, you can define God as the Big Bang. That was maybe his creation, okay, <laughs> his creation moment. And, um, but, but the thing is, like, so, like, so it kind of doesn't really make sense to pray in real time for an answer that has already been predetermined, you know. Um, so, and I, and I struggle with this. I don't pray all that much probably because of this, but here's the thing. Um, all right, I'm, I'm not going to say you shouldn't pray because, like, in other words, like, it may be predetermined that I, like, you know, stand up and walk across the stage, but until I do it, you know, it's not going to happen. So, so the thing is, like, it, there may be some kind of aspect of reality that, um, now, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> I'm trying to, like, come up with a rationale for, for praying for something to happen. Oh, yeah, all right. If it's, if it's something, if you're praying to God, let's say that you um, do a job well, okay? So you're praying to God that you do a job well, and then the answer's already been written in the past, but part of what has been written has obviously been that you pray to God that you do better, and then what you're doing with that prayer is you're conditioning yourself to do better. This is basic psychological affirmation, okay? So, so you'd have to see it within that perspective. Now, what I do, what I do is, like, rather than, quote-unquote, pray that something that's already been predetermined happens, I guess, I guess linguistically, rationally, I think the, the more proper term is that I, to hope, you know, we would hope that God, that the universe will, um, will evolve, will lead to, to positive outcomes for, for people, for, you know, for our world, for whoever. So, so that's the idea. We go from, from prayer to kind of hope, which is kind of like, they're very similar. I think, I think religious people could, could accept that kind of um, shift in, in just basic um, terminology, you know. Okay. Um, all right, so here's the thing. So, like, basically, um, what's happening, in a certain sense, with, the, with our new understanding of God as the universe, we can also define God as causality. Now, this is very cool. I, I should have, maybe I should title it this, I don't know, because God really is causality. God, you know, um, causality is the state of the universe. Remember, um, all right, no, no when, when, I, when I spoke about causality before, I spoke about it in relation to a decision. We make a decision, it has a cause, and it has a cause. Now, what I want to, I want to clarify that now, okay. Um, basically, when we make a decision, the most accurate, precise description of the cause of that decision is the most comprehensive, all-encompassing cause, which is the universe. So, no, so in other words, the state of the universe at the moment before we make any decision is what creates the decision, what compels the decision. And the state of the universe before that is what compels that decision. Okay, so you've got this, so it's not really, you know, all these tiny little causes, you know, like the, the um, I mean, certainly it does manifest in, in a, a, you know, a zillion um, little ways, you know, all these molecules moving and all. Um, particles moving, but, you know, again, the most um, comprehensive, um, all-encompassing general explanation of the, that causality is that it's the entire universe that's evolving moment by moment, creating each moment, um, each new moment, and so naturally it's creating each new thought. So think about it. If causality 
then from this perspective is really what makes things happen, then it makes a lot of sense to see God as causality. God is the causal process. God is the process of the universe, again, evolving moment to moment, state by state, you know, going from the past into the future. Um, okay, <laughs> I, think, I think you got that. Okay, um, so what else? We've got about seven minutes left. Um, so yeah, I want to talk a bit more about just like this idea of personification. Um, yeah, um, science is great. You know, science you know, gives us these cameras, these lights, everything. I mean, you know, like science is amazing. Our, our world would not be the way it, it is, you know, without science. But, but science, um, um, science, you know, it can't, I mean, it's not really, I'm, 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 I'm about to say it's not really the domain of science to, to delve into this, but it kind of actually is in a way because, um, because I mean, you have the physical sciences like physics and, um, <laughs> I don't know, astronomy, whatever. Um, but, but see that science... Um, studies reality, it studies the universe. So, it, it, you know, when you think about it, it's studying God. Um, again, God is a personification. We, um, now how, how do I want to put this? Um, okay, science, science can tell us, science, science can give us logic. You have to understand that the, 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 the basic premise, the basic foundation for science is logic. In other words, it's logic that tells us that if you repeat an experiment, replicate an experiment several times and get the same answer, then you've got some kind of result. It's, it's logic that tells us that, um, that certain scientific principles, um, you know, the law of gravity, that, you know, they work. Um, it's, it's logic to, that, to tells, that tells us that a certain equation will, will give us, you know, an answer to, um, to a measurement we're making. So, um, so then how would science relate then to um, this, this idea of God, you know, and, and, you know, free will, I guess? Um, all right, science isn't really limited just to the physical sciences. Science is also the, the quote-unquote soft sciences like psychology and sociology and anthropology, which, which is really my field more so. And, um, and it's a scientific perspective. It's, it's complete science that we're hedonic creatures. We seek pleasure, we avoid pain. That's what we do. You know, um, we're hardwired for that, which is another reason, incidentally, why we don't have free will. So, um, so psychology tells us that, well, you know, as a person, because we are people, we're going to feel much more comfortable, you know, seeing the the governor the ruler the 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 power the only power in in the universe from a perspective that fits in with our view of ourselves you know we want to be connected with this greatness because we are you know and again if god is omnipresent that means god is within us also we are god everything's god okay so so again we can we can see ourselves and everything as as simply a thing, undefined, unrelated in a certain sense, or we could see it, um, you know, we can see the universe, God, as, um, as a personification, you know, that, that relates to us, relates to who we are. Okay, I, I've done, I, I, I think I've covered this. We've got about three minutes left. All right, I'm gonna do a commercial. Okay, um, every, Wednesday night at 11 p.m., a um, good friend of mine who wants to remain anonymous, um, he refers to himself as the messenger, and he's producing this show, and um, we do it every Wednesday at 11 o'clock. It's on Manhattan Neighborhood Network, channel, um, channel 2, but it's actually channel 56 on the cable box. But, but the, the cool thing about this show is, like, you know, if you're in Manhattan, there's, like, you know, half a million people, I think, 
live there or, or, or get cable service there or whatever. You can get, you, you know, you get it um, there and, and it's a call-in show. That's the thing. I mean, like, we're explaining this and we're allowing um, people to call in and the show is getting really good. Um, so the, the, the other cool thing about the show is that you don't, you don't have to, you can be anywhere in the world and all you have to do is t log into the um, Manhattan Neighborhood and Network website on, on the net and just click channel two at 11 o'clock, the lifestyle channel, and there will be live. You know, you can, you can um, w yeah, they broadcast as live. So, and this is very cool, because this is, you know, getting into Manhattan. Um, what else? All right, and I wa want to promote my book. I, I, I took the first 18 episodes of this show, and I transcribed them, and I created um, what I think is an excellent, excellent book. I mean, like, I got to revise it because, like, you know, I wanted to rush it to press because I wanted to give my nieces and nephews, um, you know, copies for, for the holidays. So I published it, you know, fast be before um, because of that. But I'm going to re, you know, I'm going to re-publish um, it. I'm, I'm working on it right now, revise it. Um, I'm going to probably include a few more things. And so I'm going to reissue it maybe hopefully in a month or two. But the cool thing about this is that um, the, the current version is now on the Internet. Okay? In, in other words, if you Google exploring the illusion of free will, and let's say, let's say go to Google Books, you can, you can download the whole PDF book. You know, it's 164 pages, and you can download it onto your um, smartphone, onto your um, tablet, whatever. You know, just read it for free. <laughs> okay? All right. So we've got about 36 seconds left. All right. Um, I hope you understand that, you know, Scientific theism, um, yes, we can view God as the universe and maintain our perception of God and understand that God is the only power in the universe. God is causality. God, it's God's will that, that makes everything happen and not ours, and that's why we don't have a free will. And I hope, hopefully that will be much more pal palatable to, uh, to us than, uh, than a godless existence. All right, I hope, um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.